so um i would like to welcome you uh to become uh our partners um mm publications uh smart school so um you'll get uh mm publications uh school award uh, as uh, a sign of uh, commitment to uh, MM Publications uh, teaching practices. Um, we also um, provide teachers with additional interactive materials for MM Publications textbooks, um, such as audio, um, interactive whiteboard material, uh, teachers resource pack containing uh, tests, audio, and keys uh, uh, to these uh, tests uh, and some additional uh, exercises. Uh, we provide uh, methodological support uh, for uh, you when you use MM publication textbooks, whether uh, so it can be uh, webinars or um, training sessions or seminars. So, and um, new partners. Um, will get a set of textbooks for library use. Uh, we also help uh, schools to uh, register on online platforms such as ALT platform and online tests. Um, you will be able to uh, participate uh, in the annual Smart School Conference uh, to uh, meet your colleagues and uh, uh, to be able to take part uh, uh, in this conference as a speaker, um, not just uh, like uh, the visitor, uh, to share your experience and your best practices. Um, we welcome you to become part of the uh, Smart School Teachers Network on uh, online community. And um, uh, here, uh, again, uh, you can meet your uh, colleagues from other smart schools and um, um, ask, ask questions um, and uh, um, receive methodological support. Uh, and um, we provide methodological support for organizing um, extracurricular activities and summer language camps at the requ request of um, your school. Um, we will display um, the name of your school and um, logo in the uh, partners section on uh, our website, mempublications.com uh, dot ua. Uh, it's like a badge of on it, and um, your school uh, will obtain a discount uh, on a MEM publication's educational material. So, um, if you are interested and would like to uh, find out more details about this uh, partnership program um, from a MEM publications, you can contact me. Here you can see my um, email. Uh, please pay attention uh, to the spelling <laughs> of my name, Victoria, without Kolesnik at linguist.ua. Okay. And um, today we are going to have two uh, sessions. So um, Greg is going to uh, tell us how to encourage students to love uh, the English language and um, uh, how to enhance uh, students' academic achievement. And actually, Greg, I've got a question for you, and um, I'm going to wait uh, and ask it at the end of your talk. And then we are going to have a quick break just to have um a sip of water maybe a cup of tea and then i will present in, uh, my topic so we are going to talk about some ideas that you can use um in your classroom and 
um, the last but not the least, your certificate. So you'll get your certificates within three working days. There will be a letter with the link. So I kindly ask you to follow the link and to fill in the um, feedback form, uh, answer the questions, and after that, um, you will be able to download your certificate. Okay, so I just want to check our chat. Mm -hmm. Good. Hello, hello. Okay, so uh, Craig, um, the floor is yours, so uh, you can share your screen. You can show uh, your presentation. Hello, 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 everyone. Just give me one moment just to organize. Okay. Could I just get a thumbs up? Can everyone see me? Can everyone hear me? Can everyone see the first slide that says MM Publications? Write to me in the chat box because I have it open. Is everything crystal clear? Yes, excellent, perfect. All righty, so let's get down to business. My dear friends, my fellow educationalists, what can I say? Education is reaching new boundaries, new heights with our FGACs, our future global agents of change. Yes, this is what I call students around the world. This is what I would like you to start calling your students. FGACs, Future Global Agents of Change. Because change will not happen with us anywhere in the world. Change will happen with our students, the way they think, the way they feel, the way they react to the problems that surround them day to day. So this talk is going to help our students understand how to really love the language. There's two types of motivation that we have in our classroom. There's extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. Some students feel that they're learning English because they have to. Other students feel that they are learning English because they want to, because they love the language. Now, here is our challenge for today. How can we together have all of our students, or let's be realists, most of our students, right, to become intrinsic motivators with, within themselves? Okay, I'm going to offer you some steps, suggested steps that will help you in this journey of education to have your students feel that they want to learn the language, not that they're forced to do so. Okay, so what exactly is intrinsic and extrinsic motivation? I'm going to show you some words here. And what I want you to do in the chat box, now this is going to be very fast, okay? I want us to start with the word purpose. Is having a purpose intrinsic or extrinsic? All I need you to do in the chat box is to type I or E. What do you think? my fellow teachers. Purpose, what is it? 
E, E, both I, E, I. Okay, we're 50 50 so far. All right, very good. Let's see. To have passion in the classroom is that intrinsic or extrinsic? I need you to think about these words that I have shown you here on the slide. Self expression. Intrinsic or extrinsic? Love it. I love your answers. Very, very good. This is a warm up exercise right now. Okay, speed round. Perks. There are perks in what we do. Intrinsic or extrinsic? Love it. Excellent. A pay, a pay rise. Rises in the pay. What do you think that is for you? Is it intrinsic or extrinsic? To have that wonderful three-letter word, fun. Simply having fun in class, fun in life, fun in what we do. I see a lot of eyes in that one. Excellent. Curiosity. Curiosity, to be curious about something. What type of motivation is that? Now we have promotion and prizes and benefits. Promotion benefits and prizes. What do you think that might be? So far, my dear friends, that chat box is on fire. I mean, it is blowing up. And I love the fact that your answers reflect exactly how this is going in regards to intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Good afternoon, hi. Bonuses and winning is that intrinsic or extrinsic? And then we have growth. What about growth? Is growth intrinsic or extrinsic? Okay, so I'm not gonna hold back anymore. Let me show you. Here we go. Now, some of you might say, Greg, I disagree. I believe some of these are both. As some of you wrote this in the chat box, I will not disagree with you. Okay, you are probably right that some of these can be argued as a little bit of both. But for all intents and purposes, when it comes to education, we're going to sit back and express and look at this four letter word. Love. To love what we do, to love the time we spend with our students, to have our students love being with us. Because let's face it, you know, I've been in education for, oh my goodness, 20, 28, 28 years, 29 years. And I feel that education has been, is today, and forever will be in the future about our relationships with our students, our FGACs. And the relationship that we forge with our students and we nurture and we grow with our students has this core love in the relationship. So when I say love, what I really mean is having our students focus on being friends with one another, respecting one another, cultivating an environment of joy and excitement and enthusiasm in our classrooms, igniting this amazing energy in our classrooms. Would you agree that this should be the core of what we're doing? 
I mean, yes, okay. We're, we're trying to teach a language. We're trying to teach English. We're trying to have them understand that they should want to learn the language. But before we get to that, we need to look at this because this is what will help us to help them become more motivated in class. Would you agree? What do you think? I miss you guys. I miss coming and seeing you guys, but I'm so happy and I'm really grateful for having at least, you know, technology for us to reach out and, and talk with one another. So what I want to do is today is get you back to some traditional way of thinking when it regards to education. You may say, yeah, this, I know this, Greg. Okay, but we need to really work on this because I feel that our FGACs globally all around the world are missing this, that person-to-person -person connection, you know, that feeling that our teachers really care about us. I'm not saying you don't. Please, by all means, you do. I know this. But we need to take it one step further. Okay. So in this love and excitement and respect and enthusiasm, I want us to look at these three words. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a bird's eye perspective. And now I'm condensing this into something a little bit more concrete. And that's having joy, excitement, and this energy in our classroom. Okay. Students come into class and sometimes, I mean, you can see it in their nonverbal communication. They don't need to say it, right? you can see that they're just not motivated to be there. And so that immediately, that chemistry, that energy lowers in the classroom. And it's like a disease, it's like a drug. One student will pull the other student down and then the other student down and they will start misbehaving. And the whole energy in the classroom just, it, it becomes a mess sometimes. And so I'm going to offer you some strategies to reconnect with your students in that moment and to have them realize that, you know what? Yes, we do have our good days and we do have our bad days. That's life. I don't expect you as a teacher to come into class every day with a smile on your face and pretending sometimes to be happy, joyful, excited, and energized. Because students can see right through that BS. They can. Students can see if you, in fact, are faking it. And they don't want that. I don't think that's fair to our students. So when they see you being you, honestly expressing what it is about you that isn't very, ah, you're not having a good day. You're not very motivated today. You can use this as a teachable moment with your students. So then those students who are coming in, who are disengaged and unmotivated and feeling that this is just all a bunch of extrinsic motivation for the moment, they will feel comfortable to talk to you in the class and to express why it is they're feeling this way. So what happens is we start breaking down the barriers, okay? We start breaking down the barriers in our classroom, and I think it'll help. So a question I ask you in your strategy in building intrinsic motivation is, my dear friends, 
how well do you know your students? And this is a question that I ask to teachers around the world. And it's a very difficult question to answer because many teachers say, oh, I know them very well. And I ask, do you really? Because the more you know your students, the easier it is to teach and the more fun it is for them to learn because they're not a product, they're a person. So through the resources that you use with MM Publications, and a lot of the things that I'm gonna show you in this webinar are through Young Stars, the course book. Those are just channels to reach the student to achieve success in learning the language, okay? And so your students are grouped in three different categories. Some are visual learners, some are auditory learners, and some are kinesthetic learners. And some are a little mix of two or three. And so in our classrooms, we need to constantly take this into consideration, their learning style. This will help you to help them become more motivated in class. What is it that interests your students? Okay. So I would like you right now in the chat box, to share with me something that you believe interests your students. What interests them? Take a moment to think about this question. Computer games, absolutely. Something unusual, football, technology, communication with friends, gadgets, computer games, fashion, family, technology, the way they look like, the future, music, music, money, friends, hobbies, Korean culture, history, social networks, communication, prospects, I'm getting dizzy, dance, games, technology, sport, appearance, fishing, theater, gadgets, traveling, love it. So my dear friends, this is what you need to do. You need to collaborate with other teachers and find out what it is that interests students in your class. Ask your students, take down notes, get to know them better. In doing this, let me share with you a questionnaire for your young students. Fashion, playing, games, quizzes, tests, being cool, yes. Okay, so this is just a sample, but based on your answers, you can change some of these questions. Okay, K-pop, absolutely, Anna, absolutely. What do you do for fun? Asking your students now, play, make, ride, read, follow K-pop. You can change this. <clears throat> What's your favorite subject? Food, sports, music, fashion, technology, okay. Draw or stick a picture of yourself doing something that you like. This will allow you to first of all become what? To become closer with your students. Have your students talk about this with one another. This forms a stronger team. Because as a team is together, T, everyone, E, achieves A, more. T, 
team, together everyone achieves more. This is what we are cultivating in our class through all of this. Motivation, intrinsic, helps us to create a stronger team. Now, my dear friends, can I share with you another suggestion? Come closer so that we can listen a little more carefully. When you give this to your young students, I want you to also do this for yourself and have your students get to know you better as a teacher. What do you do for fun, teachers? What's your favorite? Stick a picture of yourself doing something you like. Draw a picture of yourself doing something you like and show this to your students. This is how it works. Okay. Now, for the older students, we can you can maybe use the previous slide, but let me use these suggestions for you. Think of words that describe you. What is your favorite part of the school day? What do you like to do at home? outside of school? What hobbies do you have? Okay. Some things that I may, I sometimes put the negative. What do you not like to do at home? What is your least favorite part of the school day? And you get to know that part of your, of your students. And you can use that to help you when you're teaching. All right. All good. Hold on a minute. Let me just put this here. If someone was asking me. One moment. So, team, together everyone achieves more. Okay. And this is the chain with this webinar. All right, okay, let's continue. Did I lose you? Is everyone here? Before I continue, give me a thumbs up. Come on, give me some love, give me a heart. Everyone here? Everyone's asleep. Oh my goodness, 344 educationalists are with us. <gasps> Thank you for joining. Really, thank you. Everyone's here. Excellent. Okay. I love you too. <laughs> All right. So, some suggestions. Let's get to the, the fun part now. Okay. Number one, what do we do with our kids to create this atmosphere of love, joy, energy, enthusiasm, collaboration, communication, relationship, to bond, make a creative corner. Yes, absolutely. In your classrooms, if you can, no matter how small it may be, make a creative corner. It's a corner where our students who have a specific learning style in which they want to be hands-on and creative, in learning the language, have this in your class, okay? In doing so, it will foster autonomous independent learning. It will be a corner in which our students will feel a sense of calm. It will ignite creativity, imagination, art, okay? Very, very important for some of your students, maybe not all of them, but you have this for them, okay? In doing so, you need to have certain supplies. You need to organize this space, decorate it so they understand that it is different and inspire students to 
cultivate this imagination imagination in this corner that you have created for your students. Okay, today a reader, tomorrow a leader. Love that, so true. And yet, I'm sorry that I'm going off track, but I love that comment. It is a shame and it kills me that our FGACs are not reading as much as they should. That reading a book, opening a book has become something of the past. And that is so true that the leaders of today have that as a habit, as a routine, reading books. So I think that is something very important to promote. As a side note, okay. Corner with a lot of books for kids. Yes. Now, okay, let me use this. Let me use this. A creative corner, yes? A creative corner to practice the language in making something. So, I will not even begin to try to um, pronounce your name because I can't read it. But <laughs> let me use this as an idea, your comment. This creative corner, you can have them create short stories. You can have them create poems, ideas, either individually, in pairs, or in groups. And then they can read this to their friends. I don't know. It's a spontaneous idea. I'm using it based on what you said. Okay, thank you for that comment. Let's continue. To provide hands-on experiences. Hands-on, what would we do? Here is an example for our young learners, okay? If the topic happens to be wild animals, <clears throat> we use the cross-curricular page in Young Stars to have them do this, yes, Maria, exactly, as a project, okay? If wild animals is the topic, they can work out this cutout for this cross-curricular page and find out what it is that an elephant does, what makes them different, what makes them unique. Okay. <clears throat> In this cross-curricular page, we have the uh, subject of science, continuing with, as you said, Maria, as a project, uh, talking about, learning about elephants. Okay. In doing so, number three is the cutout, which I just showed you here. And so when we do something like this, we can have, a, I would, you know what? I would always suggest, strongly suggest, that students do these in pairs. Please don't let them do, the, do this alone, individually. I think it, beco it becomes a little, bit, um, a little bit boring, okay? I think that um, when students work in pairs, even in the, in the creative corner, working on projects, working on things like this, uh, jump, jump to the cross-curricular pages, see if it will ignite curiosity in your students and have them work together, okay? You know, when students work together, they practice the language a lot more effectively. They do. They ignite this curiosity among one another. All right. Number two, connecting what you are teaching with the real world, the world around them. Now, something that I would love to have done uh, 
face to face. And I decided not to take this out, even though it's a webinar. I'm gonna share the idea with you, okay? If you have a lesson like this, our world, people of the past, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Greeks, the ancient Chinese, the Incas, okay? When you're done with this, our world um, lesson, you may think about this idea before or after this lesson. It's up to you. You take a box in your classroom, okay, and you fill it with things from your town, from your city, from your village, from your country, whatever you want, it's up to you, okay? And you fill this box with many different things and you close the box and then you walk around your classroom and you have your students pick something, very bad internet. Is that very bad internet, my internet or your internet? Can I, okay, we have to do a little check. When we're doing webinars, we always have to have a check. Everything okay? Ours, not mine, yours. I'm so sorry to hear that. But it's okay because this is being recorded so you can see it again. No worries. Okay. Thank you, Veronica. So you have this box and you fill it with many different things. And then you go around the classroom and you have students take something out of the box and talk about it. Share what they know about it. Okay, and see what they can describe using what's in the box. Clear? You could do this before or after, it's up to you. You see, it's getting them to get connected to what's going on in their day-to-day -day lives, okay? And being able to talk about it and stimulating this curiosity. I mean, I know for a fact that here in Greece, you know, the different parts of Greece have distinct, uh, different cultural backgrounds, different um, culinary backgrounds, different things about the villages, the cities that are not the same in Thessaloniki or in Athens or in Patra or the islands, okay, or up north or down south. It's very different from the mountains to the ocean. Okay. Show them your passion. Passion. I mean, my passion is what I do, you know. And when students ask me, they go, Greg, besides, you know, doing professional development and talks and presentations and talking to us and, you know, trying to motivate us. What is it that, what is your passion? What do you love to do? Truth be told, there are two things that I love. Number one is gardening. And number two is cooking. Absolutely love to do these two things. So it's very important for you to show them your passion. Now, <laughs> Asking students about their passion will bring up some pretty interesting answers. In asking teachers around the world, what are their passions? Some answers that were given to me was vacuuming, I am not kidding, knitting, and doing uh, TikTok videos and selfies, small videos with uh, selfies. Uh, let me ask you, what are your passion? What's your passion, teachers? Flowers, gardening, music, traveling, yes. What else is your passion? Reading books, sports, nature, reading perfumes, perfumes, really. Painting, swimming, reading, family, riding a bike, drawing. 
crocheting, traveling, traveling, music, reading, films, gardening, love it, painting by numbers, okay. Reading, riding a bike, meeting friends, traveling, flowers, embroidery, fishing, who said that? Ina. Reading, knitting, hiking, flowers. You have a lot of similar passions, my dear friends. Very interesting. <laughs> Taking a calming bath. Yes. Painting by crystals. All right. Have you ever shared these answers with your students? Just asking. Have you ever asked your students this question? Have you ever created this talk? this discussion with your students. Do your passions sometimes change? Now, this is very interesting. Nobody, <laughs> I love it. Nobody has written that their passion is teaching. <laughs> Nobody has written that your passion is teaching. Ah, it's a job. That's an interesting answer. It's a job. I'm glad you wrote that because this is the distinction between extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. Is it because of the paycheck and the job and the recognition and the hours you spend and because it's easy, which it's not? Or is it the other way around? I'm just giving you food for thought, my dear friends. That's all I'm doing, okay? <laughs> It is part of life, that's true, okay? So, using digital resources to create an atmosphere of intrinsic motivation. Our students are digital natives. They love technology. Please, <coughs> excuse me, I implore you, Ah, what about my passion? Well, I told you before, and I'll say it again. Mine is gardening, cooking, a little bit of fishing. I do like doing that, but I don't have the time. And what I do. I think that's pretty obvious. I mean, being in education for 28 years, being a little bit tired, but I can still handle it. I think that's also my passion. I love what I do, okay? So digital resources, use your digital resources. If you are not using all of the digital resources, especially the interactive whiteboard software, you are doing a disservice to your FGACs, okay? Because their learning style is definitely, unequivocally connected to technology. So you got to use it. And in using it, you got to just play with it and have them have fun with it and use it at least a little bit every day. Okay. Please. All right. Now, when we're doing, when we're working with um, technology, the videos that are shown for some of your lessons, for example, the solar system unit, OMG. You got to use them and ignite curiosity. I sometimes show the video and I don't even tell them to open up their books. I just show the video. Okay. Some, I didn't see the chat box. I'm just going through it while I'm speaking. Hmm. Interesting. Cooking. 
what's your specialty then? Well, since you're asking me, barbecues. I am the barbecue king. Children demand them always. Yes, they do. Because it has become part of their, their, their DNA, let's say, technology, right? Um, it makes your job exciting. Excellent. So please, sometimes when you have videos, just play the video. Tell, don't even have them open up their books and see what happens. Okay. It's all about getting them motivated in wanting to see, to learn, to discuss the language. Infusing this joy that I talked about in the classroom. Laughter. Oh my goodness. What does laughter do in a classroom? It distracts our students. Laughter. What does it do? I can't imagine my teaching without digital resources. I agree. But what does laughter do? What does it do with the dopamine level in your body? Huh? Air work all the time. Have fun. Laugh with them. Okay. Creates good vibes. Helps to create a lovely atmosphere. Makes your students fall in love with you. Positive emotions. Gives support. You're absolutely spot on. Yes. Excellent. So when we have a lesson like this, right? Hold on a second. The discussions are next. So when we have a discussion like this and we have this little comic listening and answering, right? And the question is, where is the aquarium? Right? And you have all of these exercises. What route did Mr. Parker take? How can I get to asking questions, directions, right? Let's look at number four over there in the bottom, the, the, the right, the bottom right, well, your left, no, right, yes, right. Um, activity number four, listen and tick where the hungry fish aquarium is. So let's have some fun. Let's, let's laugh a little bit with our students. What do we do to get them motivated? What do we do with our classroom? We make the classroom into a map. And we have certain students become the actual area. Supermarket, you're a pet shop. You're a zoo. Oksana, you're a hospital. Irina, you're the, you're the school. Veronica, you're the playground. Okay, now let's move the desks, right? And let's create a street. This is going to be Fraser Street. And that's going to be High Street. And this is going to be Elmer Street. And this is going to be also Elmer Street. And down here is going to be Park Street. What's going to happen in your classroom? Total chaos. But it's what I call controlled chaos. It's the buzzing of little bees. It's having the students talk in English and have fun with it and laugh with it. And it's gonna make a lot of noise, but that's okay. You'll drive your other two teachers crazy that are teaching next to you in the other classrooms, but who cares because you're having fun, right? Yes, it will be a mess, Irina, but it's a, it's a nice mess. It's a good mess. It's a mess that you can clean up easily. And this will create a wonderful atmosphere of intrinsic motivation. Okay. All right. Have discussions. Have discussions instead of a lesson. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, boys and girls. Open your books, please, to page 61. Blah, 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 blah. 
No. Do not take, what are you doing? You're taking out your books. Who said take out your books? Put your books away. Let's have a talk. Let's have a discussion. And then show them something like this. Show them a picture like this. Right? And what are they going to go? They're going to they're gonna say to you, they're going to go, what? No. <laughs> I'm not going to write that. They're going to write uh, OMG. Right? Crazy. Yeah? This is what they're going to write. This is what they're going to say. And then you're going to say, all right, get into small groups and discuss with one another if you would like to learn English like this. What are the differences from the past to the present? Look how they're dressed. Look how they're sitting. Look at their hair. Look at this. Look at that. Look at the, the furniture. Look at, look at everything. Absorb it. Talk about it. See the differences. Now you're going to have one of the students that say, I'd like to, to be a student like that. <laughs> okay. Discussions. Give them pictures that will intrigue and spark discussion. All right. Good example, thank you so very much. Discussion for the small kids and spelling. Oh, kids are always nervous when they have to spell, right? They're always nervous when they have to do something and prove something to someone, to their mother, to their father, to you, to their friends. Do you know who they have to prove something to? To themselves first. They have to prove it to themselves that they can do it, right? So here, we involve a little discussion through this talking in groups with spelling, counting, writing, singing, painting, etc. All right. Some kids may not be able to do some of these things, but that's okay. All right. <clears throat> Creating a learning station. Now, what is a learning station? A learning station is basically taking your classroom and creating a rotating um, system in which students get to rotate, groups of students get to rotate and work throughout the, the class room time. Let's so you have 45 minutes, you have one hour, you have one and a half hours, uh, and they work at each station in the class, in the classroom, excuse me. One station might be independent reading and reflecting time, reflection time, self-paced online work with technology, small group instruction, collaborative projects, your creative corner. It's up to you how you're going to create it, but this is just a suggestion. If you wanna try this in your classroom or in your school, learning stations. Self-monitoring skills. Unfortunately, our FGACs have become a little bit lazy, dare I say, a little bit fearful, a little bit um, demotivated, disengaged, uh, they want to be held by the hand and be told what to do or how to do it and not have to put too much effort into finding out. And so self-monitoring skills is extremely important. And this is why I love our, our, our resources because 
it literally has <clears throat> certain activities. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> They have certain activities that allow our students to ask themselves if, in fact, they can do something and produce the language. As an example is this here. Now I can count from one to five. I can say these shapes. I can say hello, goodbye, and basic greetings. You're not testing them. They're not looking at you to prove to you that they can do it. They're looking at themselves and saying, I put in the work, I put in the time, I am motivating myself to show myself that I can now do this. And here's another example. I can talk about the past, grammar, actions happening in the past, grammar, accidents, a safari, incidents. <clears throat> and they literally give themselves stars. What do you think? You think this would work? I don't know. We don't know unless you try. In the photo you showed, there is discipline, attention, concentration, and respect for the teacher. But what you suggest only leads to noise. Which photo is that? Wait a minute. Let me hold on. Share with me what photo are you referring to so that I can help you with that? Which photo? Liu, Liu, Liu Mila. Can you share with me what photo are you talking about? This way I could I can I can help you with this one. Okay. Now right, we'll get back to that. Ah, old ah, the old school classroom. Ah, okay. Uh yeah. Uh old old photo, the black and the white one. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, this is this is the reason why I showed this particular photo, because it will ignite a very good discussion amongst your students. OK, um, because it's it's as if they're little. Um, I, I mean, I would even dare to say puppets, you know, that they have to follow the word of the teacher rather than think independently. Yeah. Um, but again, I, I shared it as a as an example. Okay. All right. So be so excuse me, be supportive and encouraging. Always. Okay. Guys, I have a 16-year-old amazing daughter. And I have a 10-year-old amazing son. So I have two ages in which I am living with, growing with, learning from. And I realize that when we're talking about cultivating an environment of intrinsic motivation, yes, we have to assist with all of these suggestions that I gave you. But the reason why I left number nine as the last suggestion is because it is the, the foundation that will help with all the others that come before it. You see, in any relationship, even whether it be teacher to student, student to student, teacher to teacher, families, friends, society, if we do not 
<clears throat> support each other. Encourage one another in our relationships. To love, to grow, to energize, to, to feel, to have this feeling of honesty, openness, uh, empathy, and so many other things that go in our day-to-day -day interactions. Uh, it, is, it is tiring, I know. You know, teaching is not an easy job as everyone believes it is. I've said this for many years and I'll say it again, that, you know, when Aristotle says that education of the mind without education of the heart is no education at all. And I totally believe that. Okay. So let's work together, you and I, and with one another over there. And let's help each other to better our best. Let's help each other to just keep doing a little better for our FGACs. Because they do deserve it. And they are our future. So let's have them want to learn English rather than having them feel like they have to learn it. Okay. All right. So in order to discuss with students, they must have an appropriate level of development. And if the class is weak in ordinary class, this does not work. Okay. That's a very interesting word. If the class is weak. In differentiated learning, we have classrooms in which some of our students are not at the level that they should be with English. I agree. And that's very difficult. But at the same time, we took it upon ourselves to become teachers. And in being a teacher, we have to face every situation. In my all my years of teaching, do you want me to tell you the most memorable years that I've had? They weren't with the easy students, the easy classrooms. The students that I remember most are the students that were pains in the asses, that were weak, that thought they couldn't do it. And all they wanted was what I wrote in number nine. They wanted someone to support them and encourage them. And that's all it took. Okay. Hey, dear Craig. Thank you very much for your uh, talk, for your ideas. Actually, I was sitting glued to my screen, absorbing all your um, tips that you uh, have shared with us. So thank you very much for this. Uh, and uh, thank you for being with us today. And to support uh, our uh, teachers as well. And um, I promise uh, to ask you a question. Yes. Uh, you know, I want to grab this opportunity uh, and uh, uh, to ask uh, a real professional. So, um, how can a teacher of English uh, teach English to his or her own child? Um, <laughs> it is something. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Wait, do you understand me? <laughs> can I tell you the truth? Yes, please. I don't teach English to my kids. But why? 
I will tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm their father. I'm not their teacher. Mm -hmm. I will tell you something that I did do that I would tell all parents who speak English in the house. And that is, from the moment... A child is born, literally, from the moment boom, the child is born, even before they're born, even when they are in the womb for nine months, speak to them in English. Do not baby them. No, you speak to them in full sentences and you repeat, repeat, repeat. And I, I, I am not kidding. Let me tell you a quick story. I'm sorry. Just give me one second. And let me tell you a quick story. My daughter did not start speaking until she was almost four, four and a half. And everybody said that she's going to have a problem. And I said, relax. Give it time. She's forming two files in her brain. And an English file and a Greek file. When she's ready, the knowledge will come out of her mouth. And one day she came back from school and she just started speaking English without any mistakes and then turned to her mother and said the exact same thing in Greek. Students are sponges, mm -hmm. but you are not their teacher. You're their mother, their father, and that's how they should see you as such. Yeah, I totally agree with you because um, my daughter uh, takes me as a parent, but not as her teacher. And um, it's pretty hard to teach her English. It is something that I struggle with. So uh, I guess I'm not the only one as uh, a teacher of English. So uh, what about you? Could you type in the chat box? Are you great at teaching English to your own children? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's hard to teach my daughter. I teach my son at school. Again, it's a matter of opinion. It's a matter of opinion. Yes? Yeah, definitely. This was my own personal experience and my own personal opinion. So. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much for your nice talk. Thank you for having me. It's a good tradition to have you as a first speaker uh, on our back to school conference. So um, right now we are going to have a quick break, like a five minute break, just for you to uh, take uh, a cup of coffee or to stretch uh, yourselves. And then um, we are going to continue. Thank you very much, everybody.
Today, uh, we are going to talk about um, some new ideas that you can use uh, in the classroom, in the primary school classroom. So uh, we are going to pay attention to different strategies and techniques uh, that uh, will help you to revitalize your English language teaching practice and um, discover fun and uh, interactive activities which uh, can help uh, to captivate young learners and make learning um, fun and enjoyable. So uh, we'll draw our attention to interactive techniques and uh, the integration of technology um, in order to enhance student engagement and learning outcomes. But again, a quick reminder in order you uh, missed this uh, information about your certificates. So you'll get them within three working days. Um, you will receive the letter and um, I ask you to follow the link and to, uh, to fill in uh, the feedback form. Um, and uh, after that, you will be able to you know, find and download your certificate. Um, just wait a little bit. Okay. Um, but first of all, you need to check your email. And uh, uh, if you have some troubles, then uh, you can contact me and I will help you to find your certificate. Okay, so okay, let's go on. So, um, the uh, ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus uh, stated that the only constant in life is change, and um, I can say that. Um, Change is a natural phenomenon, right? It uh, affects all aspects of our lives, like um, season change or uh, weather patterns uh, shift and um, different technologies um, evolves at a rapid pace. And um, these just a few examples of the you know, constant transformations that occur around us. And um, I guess the most significant changes uh, are those that occur within our lives, within ourselves, as uh, we grow, we learn, and uh, evolve as individuals. And our beliefs, um, values, and uh, perspectives can shift over time, yes? They can change and uh, they shape us, um, who we are and how we interact with the world. And um, I've got a question for you. Um, why is it important to embrace change in the classroom? Type in the chat box. Aging uh, to develop. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, embracing change um, in the classroom is important because it helps uh, students. Uh, learn better and become more prepared for the real world. And when um, teachers try new things and keep their lessons, like, um, let's say, fresh, yeah, students are more interested and uh, motivated to learn and um, are becoming uh, challenges and trying uh, new techniques, new things, um, can help uh, students feel uh, proud of themselves. And um, trying new things can help students think um, 
in different ways. And tell me please, what's your favorite way to start the lesson? Whether it's a warm-up activity or maybe um, review of previous lesson, or maybe a fun game. Actually, it depends uh, on the purpose, right? Okay, small talks, warming up, game. To ask pupils about their feelings. Yes, it is something that I like to do as well. Mm -hmm. Small talks, funny greetings. Guessing the topic. Uh huh. Very nice. A question to discuss. Yeah, why not? Or it may be a funny song. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, and um, right now, I would like um, to propose you um, to, to do some riddles. Okay, so. Um, just think a little bit and try to, to guess. And type in the chat box, please. So, I have a face, but no eyes. Hands, but no arms. What am I? Hey, your guess is. Oh, sure. It's a clock. Yes. It's a clock. Okay. Let's check. Yeah, so you can see um, the picture of a clock. Okay, so the next one. There is a one-story house in which everything is blue. Blue walls, blue doors, blue furniture. What color are these stairs? Okay. Blue? Maybe. Maybe. No stairs, blue, then again, no stairs. Okay, it's one story, so no stairs. Mm hmm okay. No stairs, okay. Actually, you are right, because um, as you have mentioned, it is a one-story house, absolutely. So, yeah, um, you need to use your critical thinking skills as well. Okay, then the next one. People buy me to eat, but never eat me. What am I? Spoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, spoon, fork, plate, a spoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, yeah. So here, as you can see, let's check. So, Chile, you're right. Um, it can be whether a plate or a fork or a spoon or maybe a knife, right? Okay. And one more. I'm orange. I wear a green hat and sound like a parrot. What am I? Mm-hmm. I can see a carrot and carrot. <laughs> hey, good. Canary carrot. Okay. So let's check. Hey, yeah. So it's a carrot. Um, as you can see it. Um, riddles spark curiosity and um, encourage uh, active participation. They um, capture 
students' attention. And um, solving riddles um, helps them think critically, right? Uh, they uh, try to analyze information and to use their problem solving skills as well. And um, uh, riddles often introduce new words and uh, reinforce existing uh, vocabulary, um, let's say, in a playful and interactive uh, manner. And uh, I just want to add that solving riddles can boost students' um, self-esteem and encourage them to take uh, risks. And um, I just want to, um, to propose you to um, make your own riddle. In, um, for example, um, let's say that uh, we need to review, to uh, revise uh, the vocabulary related to colors, numbers, and uh, and school. So just think a little bit. Something very simple and easy. So again, you need to use colors, numbers, and and school. Like school items. Okay, I just want to give you some time. Okay. I'm going to wait. I know that you are very creative teachers. So colors, number, uh -huh, I see. I have three legs, though I don't walk. Oh, three legs, though I don't walk. <laughs> you can see me when you look up. Oh, actually, it's, it's pretty hard. It's a fruit and a color. It's a fruit orange. <laughs> ah, yeah. Uh, I have four legs and one hat. You can see it on me. Um, I guess, um, is it a chair? Okay. One more. Mm -hmm. I'm heavy, but backwards not. Oh, a bag. Okay, someone asks a bag. No, it is not. Okay. Easy, like the opposite. I have pages, but no words. I can be filled, but never heard. Hmm. You are so creative. <laughs> oh, so you use your uh, imagination to its fullest. Okay. I just like to interact with you just like this. Okay, so, and again, you can start uh, your class 
with the surprise, yes, with the um, with the game or uh, a riddle, and uh, uh, this is a good way to keep students interested and um, excited. And um, speaking about primary school students, uh, they may feel um, many different emotions when they uh, play games or uh, do riddles, and they can feel happy and sad and uh, sometimes angry yeah, um, or excited. So it is uh, important for teachers to understand these uh, feelings and um, create a classroom where um, everyone feels safe and uh, supported. So um, you need to, um, to set um, clear rules for how students uh, should behave uh, and uh, encourage students to work together and be kind to each other. And again, um, celebrate when students do well and help them when they need it. Okay, so drawing is um, important for children's feelings as well. Uh, it helps them understand their uh, emotions and deal uh, with um, some troubles or uh, problems. And uh, drawing can also make them feel good and help them learn about uh, themselves. So uh, imagination helps primary students make um, ordinary things special. Um, and uh, through their drawings, they show us what they have experienced before, how they feel and what they think about the world in general. And here you can see um, um, like the rules for um, for, a, for an activity. Actually, it's suitable for uh, distance learning, but uh, you can uh, print out um, different pictures and uh, cut it and uh, give to your students to work with them. So uh, you can ask your students um, to, um, to draw, um, like uh, to use their imagination and uh, uh, to complete uh, this or that picture. So if we are talking about distance learning, you can share your screen while the students make their own uh, pieces of art. Yes, and then uh, each student, um, a student, can take turn uh, showing their drawing uh, to the class and um, extend um, this activity uh, by assigning it as a writing activity to complete at home. And uh, um, they can uh, write a few. Uh, sentences about uh, their drawings and um, um, when they um, tell a story about this uh, picture uh, their stories become more detailed uh, than the pictures alone and um, just an example yes uh, it was me drawing <laughs> Uh, different um, different pictures yeah so um, the students can can use or can choose let's say a cloud and uh, use their creativity and imagination and um, be free to to draw and then um, they are going to present their story Okay, and uh, you can also integrate educational uh, videos. Um, and um, speaking about educational videos, there is um, a trap. When we plan um, 
the video lesson, uh, we usually follow uh, the next plan, like the next uh, structure. So we lead the students into the topic of the video. Um, then we play uh, the video and um, students uh, answer some main questions and uh, after that we uh, check their answers and then we play it again and uh, uh, students listening for more details and uh, after that they are ready to uh, check their answers. Uh, but uh, the thing here is that um, the traditional uh, listening and uh, video lessons don't work um, very well. Uh, this is because they use um, as a wrong idea uh, about how um, listening works. So um, these lessons, these kind of lessons with their um, following plan, uh, they help students practice uh, listening, but they um, don't teach them how to listen. Right? Uh, this is because uh, they don't focus on the important parts of listening. They uh, don't look at what might have gone wrong when students listen or uh, what they do while listening. And um, listening is not just a passive skill. Um, and uh, a better way um, to teach listening uh, is not um, just uh, to play um, something, whether it's video, let's say, and ask um, what did they say, yeah? And then check the answers. We need to think about what else is important in uh, listening, and uh, um, this will be um, important for many of the exercises um, the students uh, will do. So, and um, the uh, solution can be the following. So, you can take uh, four um, screenshots from the video and ask students um, um you can they can work in groups or in pairs and um you can ask students to create a story or um, a situation but that explains uh what's happening in all four images so students um can uh, watch the video and just check their uh, predictions. And um, this is uh, the most uh, effective as a um, pre-watching activity. Uh, but again, it can be used as means of uh, practicing writing after uh, watching the video. So uh, here you have these uh, four screenshots taken from uh, one video. So think over and try to predict uh, the topic of the video, uh, the story uh, that you are going to listen to. And again, you can share your ideas in the chat. So you can see um, a boy. There are his friends or maybe classmates. Oh, birthday party. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Children counting the age of a birthday boy, yes. So, um, all the age too. Maths lesson. Mm -hmm. How old is uh -huh, going to be maths lesson? The 1st of September. <laughs> Maybe. Holiday, yes. These are your ideas. 
you just brainstorm your predictions, your ideas, and it's really nice. Okay, so let's um, uh, uh -huh, get acquainted with each other party. Mm -hmm. uh, good, let's um, watch the video. Hello, Mrs. Jones. Hello, kids. Hello, Tom. What's this? It's a cake. Wow. A pencil, a pen, a bag, a ruler. Oh, I'm sorry, but the internet connection is not stable. So, um, okay, school objects. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, yeah, school, so learning of school things. Okay, good. Okay, unfortunately, you are not able to watch this video up to the end. Uh, but actually, you're right. Okay, good. So, and um, this way you can check your predictions. Okay, and uh, now let's um, watch the next video. And a rubber. Oh no. Is it broken? In the morning. Oh. It's hot and sunny. The grasshopper is singing, but the ant is studying. Good morning, ant. What are you doing? I'm studying, grasshopper. Let's sing and dance. Sorry, I can't. I'm doing my homework now. Oh, okay. In the afternoon. Hello again. What are you doing? I'm watering the flowers. Can you help me? I can't now. I'm tired. Later in the afternoon. Hey, Grasshopper, can you help me? What are you doing? Are you planting flowers? No, I'm not. I'm planting a tree. It's very big. I can't help you now. I'm playing football. In the evening. What are you doing now, Ant? I'm cleaning my house now. Can you help me, please? Um, I can't. I'm skateboarding. Look at me. My helmet is great. A few days later. Hey, Ant. What are you and your friends doing? We are carrying food. Come, help. I can't now. I'm fishing. In winter. It's cold and it's snowing. The ant is at his house with his family and friends. They are eating and drinking. Hello, grasshopper. Are you okay? No, I'm not. I'm hungry and thirsty. Please, come in. We've got food for you too. Thank you, Ant. You're a good friend. 
Okay, so this is going to chat. Learning grammar, mm -hmm. practicing present progressive, uh huh, moral lesson, present continuous, study grammar. Mm -hmm. Good. So, um, actually, um, uh, you can detail, um, um, uh, to the students that situation, uh, or, uh, a character uh, finds himself in the video and then ask the students uh, uh, to discuss what they would do in this situation. And um, uh, again, um, have them uh, watch and after that compare um, to their characters' actions in the video. And uh, um, after that, um, pause the video at uh, certain points and ask students some questions um, in order to get uh, like additional um, opinions or suggestions. Uh, and then uh, you can check. And then uh, you can integrate online learning uh, platforms in your classroom as well. And uh, there are lots of uh, learning platforms that you can use. But when you teach uh, English using MM publications, uh, textbooks, you can use your team platform. And this kind of platform uh, can be assessed through a computer or a tablet or even a smartphone. And um, um, the exercises are connected to uh, specific modules of the um, MM publications textbooks. And um, these are extra exercises and you can't uh, find um, uh, them in uh, course books. So um, you can decide um, which exercises uh, to make available and uh, choose the date. And you can also um, receive feedback about the student's uh, performance with uh, plenty of statistics and uh, it uh, will allow you to keep uh, track uh, of the progress of the group uh, or um, uh, to keep uh, uh, a track of the progress of uh, each student. And again, students uh, um, receive immediate feedback so they can um, see uh, their result immediately. They can see their mistakes and um, uh, they have got the opportunity um, to correct them. Okay, so and um, uh, the EOT platform uh, should be easy to use for young learners. And right now you can see the student's account and you can see there that it's uh, um, uh, easy to use, like a um, user-friendly uh, dashboard. Uh, so the student can see the only book and uh, um, in this way, it's young stars, uh, the thought level, and um, um, then um, he or she uh, can choose whether it's uh, practice, like additional exercises uh, or uh, tests. And uh, um, there are um, clear um, instructions and icons. So. Um, it, it is uh, very easy for young learners to navigate um, this platform independently. Uh, yes, you can uh, show your students, your primary school students, how to um, work with this platform. But believe me, it is uh, um, very easy um, and um, um, they uh, 
won't have any troubles um, navigating with this uh, platform. So um, the student um, can see their statistics. Um, they can choose um, the time period and uh, um, um, to have this uh, in, let's say, like a uh, diagram. Um, okay, so, and um, I guess this is it uh, from me for today. And um, a quick reminder about your uh, certificates. So uh, you'll get them within three working days, uh, please. Uh, don't forget to fill in uh, the feedback form and after that you will be able to download your certificate. So here uh, I just want to share my contact information. Uh, you can see my uh, phone number, my email address victoria.kolesnik at linguist.ua uh, okay, uh, you can uh, scan the QR code and it will lead you to our um, Facebook page and then publications Ukraine. So uh, you are more than welcome there. And uh, you can subscribe and um, keep updated. Okay, so I just want to tell you that um, Today was the first day of our back to school conference and um, tomorrow we are going to have the second day of it and uh, um, we will talk about how to teach English uh, to secondary school students and uh, we will meet uh, our speaker, uh, Chris, and um, yeah, I just want to check uh, the chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Yes. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good. Thank you very much for joining us today. And I do really appreciate your support. Okay. And here I just want to um, to share uh, some information uh, with you, just to be the first uh, to get to know a little bit more about um, primary school workbooks. Okay, goodbye. See you tomorrow.